Roman Abramovich said he will sell the club with the net proceeds, whatever that means, going to benefit victims of the war in Ukraine. Liam Atrumi is Chelsea reporter at The Athletic. Morning, Liam. Morning. Um, are you surprised by this or was this kind of inevitable? I mean, there's, there's a sense that he's trying to get ahead of any, any sanctions. Um, it certainly felt increasingly inevitable. Um, when you look at the the broader events of the last week, I think there's been a growing political will um, to see Abramovich face some sort of sanction. He's he, he seems to be sort of the best known oligarch at this point in time that doesn't have any sanctions to his name. Um, and I think when you when you get to the point where Keir Starmer is making it top of his agenda at Prime Minister's questions, um, I think it couldn't have been any clearer to Abramovich or you know, the, the hierarchy at Chelsea that, that, that something is, is probably coming or at the very least the pressure is, is hugely ramping up. Um, we had Abramovich obviously tr try to hand off control of the club to the Charitable Foundation trustees earlier this week. That plan wasn't particularly thought through and never looked likely to work. And this statement that was released yesterday comes, you know, on the heels of 24 to 48 hours of building reports increasingly credible reports that bidders are circling for Chelsea if we put aside politics and morals for a second Liam in some ways was he the perfect football club owner because he was very very rich he was willing to sink lots of money into the club he was willing to loan it money that he doesn't want to see paid back he was willing to redo the training uh, grounds he was willing to just seem to turn Chelsea from and also ran into a superpower. If you look back at him purely as a football club owner, was 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 his involvement almost as good as you can get from an owner? Yeah, it, in terms of the kind of owner that sort of British football has really lionised in the Premier League era, you would have to say that Roman Abramovich is pretty much the archetype of it um, for all the reasons that you just said. You know, he he's always presented himself as someone who. Um, has owned Chelsea for for the love of football and for the desire for success rather than any sort of profit. He's he's, you know, there have been attempts to make Chelsea a bit more of a sustainable business, but it's never been quite the same as at certain other clubs. You know, Liverpool, for example, where the owners absolutely demand that the club um, pays its own way uh, and and sort of outgoings and balance with incomings. There's there's been huge spending throughout. Uh, not all of it smart on on players, but it's it's always been interesting for fans to follow. And fundamentally, they've been given an incredible ride because you know, nineteen major trophies in nineteen years. They've won the Champions League twice. Um, I don't think you'll find anyone, any Chelsea fan that hasn't that wouldn't call sort of last almost two decades the the, the ride of their lives supporting the club. Uh, and that's where I think the sort of conflicted element of this comes in with with Abramovich, of course, leaving under a, a massive cloud. Well, that's the question, isn't it? Because if we return politics and morals back into to the equation, uh, we talked to Gary Kasparov, uh, the Russian dissident, former chess player the, earlier in the week. And he said, you know, it's part of a deliberate attempt by, by Putin and people associated with Putin, which we will include uh, Abramovich in. Uh, to promote Russia, a sort of Russification, Russian money going into London. It's a deliberate attempt to get ordinary punters, fans, to think fondly of uh, the Russian establishment. That's why they do this, partially. Did they, have Chelsea fans, in your experience, felt that? Have they, have they ever felt compromised morally by, by what's gone on? Or in the end, is it just a question of someone's got to own the club and, and rich people tend not to be very moral anyway? I, I think there are Chelsea fans, you know, quite a lot of Chelsea fans that have always felt conflicted to some degree about Abramovich. Um, because this is not the first time that, that questions have been raised about the source of his wealth and his motivations for owning Chelsea. It's been kind of bubbling under the surface for, for 19 years and it's been raised numerous times. It's just only now has the political will um, really risen to the point where the pressure has has ramped up to the stage where I think he feels he needs to get out. But I, I do think, you know, obviously you will get some some Chelsea fans that will that will blindly um, defend him purely because he's put money into the club. But I think there are quite a lot of Chelsea fans as well that that take a bit more of a nuanced um, view of it all, and and I think they accept that there are significant and serious questions. Um, about Abramovich that have, have probably never been answered because he's always been a very silent public figure um, by design as much as anything. And, and you have to somehow 
reconcile that in your head with the with the success on the pitch yeah and uh, he's not even been very forthcoming even now with what he even the statements that he's given thus far uh, Liam thank you for joining us this morning that's Liam Toomey Chelsea reporter at the Athletic uh, Roman Abramovich selling Chelsea <laughs>